Okay, this is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology TV. We're here at the Oceanology International in San Diego, and we're here with Jeff Smith, the president and the CEO of Riptide. And Jeff, first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Greg, thank you for having me. This was great, great show. Pleasure to be here. Excellent. Tide name is a relatively new one in the market. Uh, can you give our viewers, our readers, an explanation of who Riptide is? Uh, Riptide's a brand new company. We've been around uh, less than two years. Um, really in business and selling UUVs for about a year now um, with what we call really our, our pre-production unit. Um, it was a beta unit to get out to customers, get some feedback on it. And now we're at a point where we're starting to shift to full production with a, with a brand new product and an exciting time in the market. So we're really looking forward to uh, you know, getting our name out there. I think in the upcoming months, you'll see a lot more of us and uh, hear a lot more about what we're doing. Jeff, obviously the Riptide name is new but you are hardly new to this market. So uh, if you don't mind, could you just give us a little bit of your personal background uh, in the subsea vehicle market? Okay. I, I guess, you know, I've been in the space for about uh, 25 years. I started uh, with a company, General Dynamics, doing a lot of submarine systems, uh, deep sea systems. Uh, moved from there to uh, Bluefin Robotics, uh, where I was the uh, left as the COO before starting Riptide. Okay. Um, so totally in the UUV space specific, uh, about 12 years of experience. Um, and I formed Riptide with a couple uh, key experienced people that I had from my past career. I uh, really was able to pick a great team, of, put them together, and uh, came out with a you know, swimming vehicle in a very short time frame. You obviously have long experience in this market. What did you see in this market that caused you or brought you to create Riptide? So the biggest thing I think we saw was an opportunity for um, cost and capability. I mean, historically, the UUV market, you know, sensors that go on vehicles can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Putting them on vehicles, it can be multiple millions of dollars in the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, where we saw an opportunity was to really help, you know, work with the latest technology, the latest electronics, the latest manufacturing methods, and really drive the cost down to, uh, you know, we started Riptide with a target of a 10K UUV. And quite frankly, we didn't think we'd be able to hit it. Um, but, you know, I'm pleased to report that we're selling UUVs for 10K without payloads on them. Okay. Um, with payloads, you know, there's a lot of the sensor manufacturers that are coming out. You know, I can't name a sensor manufacturer that doesn't have a micro sensor in the works that's, you know, a quarter of the cost and half the price or half the, uh, you know, half the performance and a quarter of the price kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of a lot of people that are supporting this, you know, let's get more of them out there. Let's really help. The, the market expand mm -hmm. uh, with greater quantities of these systems and really, you know, do everybody, uh, you know, a service with, with being able to get things in the water uh, faster, cheaper, that can run for longer and, and have, you know, at least as much capability as they had, but really bring that next level of, of technology to the market. And that's really what we set out to do. Okay. Obviously, starting a new company in any environment comes with a lot of challenges. When you look uh, from the time that you started this company to today, what has been the biggest challenge to get you to the point that you're at? Uh, it's, you know, every day is different. And that's, you know, going into this, I guess I didn't appreciate, um, you know, how hard some things were going to be. But at the same time, you know, we've been extremely fortunate in the year we've been out. Um, we've had, you know, great interactions with customers. Uh, we think we're driving a very exciting, you know, we're exciting place in the market with the price point we're at. Mm -hmm. um, so, Quite frankly, I'm really surprised at how fast things have developed for us as, as a young company. Um, you know, the daily challenges, you know, it's, it's really high highs and really low lows, depending on what day it is. Uh, you know, there's, there's little things, there's big things. But, you know, in general, it's, it's really just been a, you know, it's, it's been, I think, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, okay. It's just an exciting time to be in the space. So you discussed the manufacturing technologies uh, that went into making this possible, uh, specifically 3D printing. Can you just kind of walk us through some of the technologies, whether it be manufacturing or the technology that you find inside the vehicle uh, that allowed you to hit your goals? Um, so we, um, we started with, a, with what the Navy calls an A-size vehicle. So that really got us to something small. And, I mean, you talk about some of the challenges in starting a new company, uh, you know, Having come from a company that built million dollar UUVs and starting a company without financing, I couldn't afford to make a UUV like that. So, 
I was able to start Riptide really within my meager credit card limit. And we set out to build a vehicle that we could afford to buy basically yeah. components on on my credit card. Yeah. Um, so we went to, uh, you know, carbon fiber for the mid body of the vehicle. Yep. Uh, it got us a nice, strong, uh, deep rated system. Mm -hmm. And then around that, we, uh, we used a lot of 3D printing to generate some pretty complex designs. Uh, with a lot of built-in capability, a lot faster than you could do it with machining or you know standard manufacturing processes. Uh, we were able to actually get a much deeper rated vehicle than we ever imagined off of you know 3D printed nylon. It allows us a good deal of flexibility also in the design. Um, we're moving to fixed molds for the systems. That'll help kind of drive our uh, drive some of the ceiling issues down with 3D printing, some of the challenges there. But um, 3D printing really allows us to have flexibility going forward to change things put on new payloads, forward-looking sensors, cameras, all sorts of things that really just, it, it makes it uh, very adaptable to do different things. Um, as you know, this gang here that's visiting this show and around the world, they're uh, interested in the technical specifications, uh, the capabilities of the vehicle. Um, you mentioned a couple of times the depth. And again, without not going through the entire brochure, but can you give us uh, a rundown of the technical specs? What can this vehicle do? So what we set out to do was really make something that was flexible for most any user. And um, from a depth perspective, we actually targeted uh, 200 meters because that was really where we looked at most of the small vehicles that were on the market and it was a good area to hit. After pressure testing the vehicle, we actually upped the pressure rating to 300 meters, so 1,000 wow. feet. Um, you know, most UVs um, are, you know, they try to operate at a very efficient speed. So as a result, they're very slow. Uh, typically three knots is an average speed for most UVs that are out there. Um, we found a motor that worked for us well at that efficiency point, but it was actually a much higher power motor than we could really use at typical UV speeds. But as a result, we have a vehicle that's capable of going over 10 knots in speed if it had to. So it's, you know, there's a lot of a lot of benefits from the pieces that we took and, and really what we put together to really give us a, a wide range of operating uh, parameters that we can hit with the vehicle, really to, to you know, give end users a you know, wide range of missions and applications that they can use it for. Um, you know, we started the vehicle with um, alkaline batteries, you okay. know, double A's, double A's like in your remote control. Uh, the difference between, you know, your remote having two or four, and yeah. this is uh, the standard vehicle, which is a little bigger than this, has 144 double A's in it. Okay. Um, that runs for 47 hours at two knots or without a payload. With a payload, typically down to 24 hours. Um, most small UVs don't tend to run for 24 hours. We were able to get that, uh, that endurance up because we did a lot of work on our hydrodynamic efficiency and our electro electrical efficiency on the vehicle. Um, where we really saw the benefits of those advantages and, and features coming into the vehicle was for future battery systems and even newer technologies that are coming. Uh, we have a partnership with a company called Open Water Power. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at getting a substantial battery capability on a on a 25 pound vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to run with the open water system right now predicted 1,500 nautical miles at 2.8 knots wow. on a vehicle that costs a little more than 10k from okay. a base perspective. And that's that's really what we see as a as a game changer in this market. You're at a very interesting point with your company uh, from a manufacturing perspective. Uh, can you share with us where you're at? Um, so we, uh, you know, we basically been selling vehicles for about a year. Um, the first year we've been in business, uh, we've, we've gotten a, a, a little over two dozen orders uh, to build vehicles, uh, which for coming out of the gate, I'm very happy with. Uh, the customers that we've sold to knew that we were very early in the market. Um, you know, it was a new product. Um, so they really provided a lot of feedback for those early designs that really are turning into us, um, turning into our, our next iteration of the design and influencing where we go with that. Um, so we're uh, within a few weeks, actually, of announcing our full production system, our next generation production system. Uh, again, got more power out of the electronics. Um, we're moving to full up molds for the system, really to make it um, just, you know, much, uh, be able to make them in higher volumes uh, and make them a lot more effectively, uh, more robustly, things like that. So um, it's been a great first year for us. Um, but I think from here forward, you're going to hear a lot more about Riptide and kind of where we're going. Again. This is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology TV. And again, Jeff, thank you very much for your time. We look, we look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Thank you, Greg.